So he did. Praise the Lord. So welcome home, everybody. Thank you, Lord, so much for this morning. Thank you for this great day that we can have here in Southern California. Beautiful 80-degree weather today. We are grateful. Bless our mothers, Lord God. We thank you so much for them. And as we take a minute to just encourage them, Lord God, we pray that you are glorified in this study and teaching today. And we just bless you, Father God. And it is in Jesus' name we pray and say, Amen. Amen. So once again, happy Mother's Day. And as we know, in Genesis chapter 2, God the Father gave the woman to the man originally because the Lord's words, hey, it's not good for man to be alone. Now, fellas, we understand that. We recognize that, don't we? We know it's not good for us to be alone. And oftentimes, we are always talking about our women. We love our women, and we're grateful for their love for us. It is not good for a man to be alone. And then after that statement, shortly thereafter, the Lord gave the woman the privilege and the ability to bear children. <laughs> the privilege and the ability. Where does the privilege part come in, this young lady's asking? Are you kidding me? What did you do to me? Guys, you remember that? All right? Don't get near me, all that whole thing in the hospital, right? Did we remember that? Just a brief snapshot. But thankfully, the fruit that abounds is always precious, and, and we're grateful for that. So praise the Lord for that. The woman given the ability and the privilege to bear children. Now, ladies, I'm going to try to paint this picture as best as I can. No matter what we say, we have no idea what childbearing is about. We try to pretend like we do. We don't. So next time one of your male counterparts says, oh yeah, I can relate to childbearing, go ahead and just poke him in the eye and tell him that's for Pastor G. I know you're lying. You don't have a clue. Because we don't. We don't have a clue. You know, we're rough and tough guys, but we don't have a clue. Childbearing, we don't have a clue. I mean, we fall apart right there in the hospital room. You know, we're not knowing what to do. So be gentle and kind with us, will you please? We're doing our best. But yet, ladies, beginning at conception, mother and child are one. And during the growth of the child in the womb, a unique relationship is formed between mother and child. Now we men, we don't quite get that. And we never will be able to. We're not supposed to. But ladies, you know about this unique relationship between mother and child. That's the gift that God has given you. Through the pain and the suffering, but then the fruit, all of a sudden, life just changed, didn't it? Wonderful. The child's future is dependent on the decisions of the mother. The immediate decisions of the mother. At the moment of conception. And fellas, we've heard this statement, haven't we? When we've heard that one of our women friends or whatever realizes that they were pregnant, all of a sudden we've heard the statement of that lady saying, I've got to change some things in my life. You know, I'm going to quit smoking while I'm pregnant. We've heard that, haven't we, fellas? Or we've heard some of our lady friends say, you know what, I, I, used to, I, I have a, a glass of wine at dinner or something, I'm cutting that out. Now that I know that I'm pregnant, I'm stopping that. Or whatever the case may be. When a woman finds out that she has conceived, lifestyles change. And that's an honorable thing. Because once again, as previously mentioned, the child's future is dependent on the decisions of the mother during this, this time. So how am I going to change my life is often the question asked to the young lady. What kind of actions and activities am I going to tailor? Those things come about through conversation and through wisdom 
these decisions are made. For moms both brand new and experienced, the time carrying the child is intimate. And again, we men can never understand that. We never will be able to. So we want to just stand back and observe and encourage accordingly. So that time carrying the child is intimate and during that time a mother's love is truly developed. I mean a mother begins to love this child, this, this little person that she's never even seen. And maybe occasionally and as of recently maybe felt something. But mom has had this love for this child from the point of conception. I mean, it's just unexplainable. And it's an amazing thing. And it's that love, that love, that mother's love that is being developed. Mother and child, yes, yet additionally added to the mix. The Lord, God the Father speaking in Psalm 139, God the Father, I knew you in the womb. When did God know this person in the womb? The moment of conception. The Lord's voice can be heard in our imagination. I know you. Peekaboo. That's the Lord. I, know, I see you. Hello. I know you. Furthermore, the Lord gives us the assurance and gives that child the assurance, hey, understand, you are being fearfully and wonderfully made. You're being put together. I'm forming you. I'm fashioning you. I mean, this is our God. This is God the Father speaking to this conceived baby at the moment of conception. The Lord's voice is echoing through the womb, if you will. What a thrill, what a joy, what a fascinating thing. Now, we've got to be very patient with our scientist group. They're behind reality. See, they're trying to catch, our scientists are trying to catch up with the Bible. See, the Bible's way here, and our scientists are way here concerning conception. So we've got to be patient with our scientist friends. They're not so smart. But we've got to encourage and bless them and lead them along. Science will eventually catch up with the Bible. Don't worry. But again, we've got to be patient, kind, and long-suffering with those in the scientific community. See, science cannot figure out when conception begins. It's sort of a toss-up. And so, of course, the Lord is saying, hey, conception, conception begins at the beginning. Makes sense to us, doesn't it? So be patient with your scientist friends. But they'll come around. Science is coming around. But it takes time. Hopefully it doesn't take billions and billions of years, right? <laughs> but our scientist friends are beginning to catch up with the Bible. And this is just one of many subjects where science is catching up to the Bible. So praise the Lord for that. So the Lord saying, hey, I knew you. I knew you from the day of conception. So realistically, the time carrying the child and beyond can be considered a cord of three strands. I'm, kind of, I'm borrowing that from Ecclesiastes. The time carrying the child and beyond can be considered a cord of three strands. One, mother. Secondly, child. And the third strand, the Lord. Now as Solomon was explaining in the book of Ecclesiastes about the three-strand cord, and I'm just borrowing that idea from him, taking it out of context to some degree, but applying it to us today, that three-cord strand, the whole point is, is very strong. Mother, child, and the Lord. A very strong connection. Again, fellas, a connection that you and I are never really going to fully be able to embrace, but we need to stand back and observe and acknowledge, and that's what we're doing today.
that three-strand three cord. Mother, child, and the Father God himself. The, a cord of three strands is very hard to, to break, and we recognize that as men. Furthermore, our brother, the Apostle Paul, in his letter to Titus, in Titus chapter 2, verse 4, Titus 2, 4 reminds moms to love their children. Titus reminds moms to love their children. How do you love your children? Well, one of the ways, and the context in Titus, as far as this statement, love your children's mom, the context here in Titus is for mom to nurture. That's the context here. Hey, love your children. Nurture them. The word nurture comes from the Latin and it means primarily to nourish. So mom, you're to love your kids. How do I do that? I nurture them. And in nurturing, I nourish. And so Paul is being very specific in reminding moms here in the book of Titus. <laughs> nourish your kids. Nourish them. Well, to nourish, we do both physically and spiritually. When the baby is revealed, and I'll tell you, when I first saw my, my son Bo being born, that just blew my mind. And at the time, I was running from the Lord, and when I saw Bo, and I'm telling you, I've told this story before, but when he was born, just right as he was hitting the atmosphere, he was dark purple. It was wild. The craziest thing. And it, it was just for a split second. And then he turned that nice golden brown, that red Native American color. And it just blew my mind. I just went, you know, a double take, huh? And again, I, as I told you, I was running from the Lord at the time. And I was getting closer and closer back to the Lord. And then the Lord told me, he said, only I can do that. <coughs> and I surrendered. I said, you're right. You're right. And so the moment that Bo, when Bo was born, Connie, of course, got him in her arms and began to nurture him immediately. She'd never seen this kid before in her life. For nine months, she just heard about him, right? And now, all of a sudden, here he is. And it was a glorious moment. I mean, it was crazy. It was nuts. I have never experienced anything like that in my life. Nothing even close. And so I'm just, man, like, wow. And so she began nurturing this son of hers, and shortly thereafter she began to feed him. So she was feeding him physically, because he was hungry. <laughs> Much like prior, just before he moved out of the house, I mean, he'd empty the refrigerator out about three times a day. <laughs> so you need to get a job and go. <laughs> I love you. <ya. laughs> But mom was nurturing her child immediately. It was natural. That love was being demonstrated. So she was nurturing him as mothers do. That's what happens. And so the child, the children are being cared for. So we, mom nurtures physically. And then mom's second role is to introduce these children to Jesus. That's mom's second role. So first is to nurture them physically. Secondly is to introduce them to Jesus. And thirdly, mom is to meet the emotional needs of the child. All while building up and preparing her children to be productive participants in society. No small task. No small task at all. Moms have a full-time role. We recognize and understand that. And it never ends. It never ends. That's why we want to encourage moms everywhere today. As stated in Psalm 
127, verse 3, mom easily recognizes that her children are a gift from God. Now that's even during time out time. That's even during the times where you want to just start banging heads. And I can relate to this because I, I come from a family of five, four boys, pray for my mom, and they went one, two, break, three, four, five. So my mom had a little tribe at 20, 22 years old, 23 years old. She's got a tribe. You know, back in the early 60s, that was a trip. And she was working hard. And there were times where she wanted to butt our heads together. We deserved it. Of course, being the oldest, I instigated most of the trouble. <laughs> and I've asked her to forgive me for that. She's still kind of, the jury's still out. <laughs> These are our moms. But they know, hey, they look at, moms look at their children and they know that they're gifts from God. We as men, me, we as, as dads, we're kind of like, hey, get a job. Like I said, get out, you know, get your own food, you know, stuff like that. That's what we're doing. But mom's like, oh, baby, the baby, we're going out in the back alley. And see, I taught my son how to fight, but I didn't teach him how to cheat. So I can still take him. <laughs> See, when I tell him we're going to meet out in the alley, I've got a two-by-four behind me. <laughs> Look over there, a bird. Pop. <laughs> Mom easily recognizes her children as gifts from God, like only a mother can do. And finally, as we conclude this morning, Proverbs 31, verse 27. The woman, and I can, if I can have a little liberty and apply it to mom, mom watches over the affairs of her household. The idea here that the writer is presenting is mom watches over her household like a military sentry. I mean, halt, who goes there? Who's coming? Who's going? That's the idea. Mom's the gatekeeper. Mom is overseeing, watching over the affairs of her household. And she does not eat the bread of idleness. Over these last three weeks, as I've drug myself home late in the evening, I'd wash up these last couple of weeks, I'd, I'd freshen up and I'd lay down in bed and then I would wake up at one o'clock in the morning, my wife's not there and so I call her, where are you at? Well, we're still here at the church. You're kidding. Are you okay? Yeah, we're just painting cubbies for the kids. We're just getting everything ready for the, the youth room. I thought we just did that for the last 10 hours. Oh, I got my second win. Oh, and Roseanne's here, or Sandra's here, or somebody's here, you know. So we're having a great time. And, and so-and-so bought dinner. I'm thinking, it's 1 a.m. Yeah, oh, is it? Oh, oh, it is. Yeah, and so it was just not, so our women, fellas, they do not eat the bread of idleness. I mean, I was almost in a way embarrassed. And she's like, no, never mind. You got other things, you know, you, you get up early in the morning and take care of stuff, and I'll stay up later, you know, and, and such. I said, okay. But no, our women do not eat the bread of idleness. And so what's the reward of that, Mom? The reward of that is in verse 28 of, of Proverbs 31. The reward is her children rise up and call her blessed. That's all Mom's looking for. Just have the kids just say, Mom, you're a blessing. Thanks, I love you. Fellas, did you hear what I just said? That's all Mom wants. Some acknowledgement. A thank you. Thanks, Mom. Thanks for everything. That's it. She'll go over the top with that. And you've already prepared that. I know you have, so follow through. It's going to be great. So her, her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. Praise the Lord. And so Solomon, the wisest man in the world, Solomon begins 
to conclude, and he says, this is my conclusion. The wisest man in the world, of course, led by God the Holy Spirit, says, many daughters have done well, but you, you godly women, excel them all. That's Solomon's conclusion, led by the Holy Spirit. Many daughters have done well, but you spirit-filled women, you excel them all. Period. This is the smartest man in the world, being directed by God the Holy Spirit. Pretty good combo, huh? Not bad. Not bad. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing away, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. This is the Lord. This is the Lord using his vessel and his hand to write these things, Solomon. A woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands. Honor your women. Fellas, today is our job to honor our women. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Brag about your, your ladies. Brag about your moms. Brag about your wives, your daughters. Guys, today's the day that we honor our women. That's, what we, that's our function, fellas. Final question. And I want to clear this up. Is there any test tube babies here today? No test tube babies? So we all have moms. Wow, Whew, what a relief. We can all enjoy the fact that we can celebrate, all of us, we can celebrate motherhood. No matter where you're at in motherhood, we get to celebrate it. We've all got a mom, is my point. We've all got a mom. We can all celebrate motherhood, and so therefore, thanks to moms everywhere. Everywhere, thanks. A heart-filled thanks. Within that remark, please know we celebrate all of our women folk. We do. And we want to enjoy that reality. We love all our women. We love our women, no matter who you are. We're proud of you, we love you, and we celebrate each and every woman here today in whatever posture or position you currently are in, we love you. We'll continue to pray for you. We are your biggest fan. Praise the Lord. If I could ask the worship team to come join me. Once again, our desire was to give a gift, a Mother's Day gift of having us moved here. I think we've done pretty well. I hope everybody's semi-comfortable, but again, Let's let the dust settle. You'll find your place. The Lord will highlight it for you. But in the meantime, take a tour around a little bit. Get an opportunity to kind of let some things sink in. Enjoy the rest of the day. Mothers, we thank you. We're proud of you. Ladies, we're proud of you. We are grateful. God loves the Harupa Valley. And continue to understand that. And although God's Spirit is moving throughout the Inland Empire, I'm telling you right now, God is concentrating on Calvary Chapel, Harupa Valley. And you know that. You've seen the things that have been going on. So get under that spout, the way Chuck used to always say. I, I try to find out where the Spirit of God is pouring out, and I want to get right under that spout. Find that spout and get under it. It's going to be easy to find. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you Wednesday. If you need prayer, come join us up front. In the meantime, join us by standing. And let us be reminded that we are family. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hi, everybody. Pastor Greg, Calvary Chapel, Harupa Valley. Hey, we're so glad that you've been enjoying the videos. And we just know that God has been touching you and just giving you a blessing through these teachings. But you know, we'd like to give you a challenge. 
Since this material is available, as you know, you can go to the website and pull these videos down, but we would like to challenge you. Since you're enjoying these teachings on a regular basis, we want to challenge you, why not share these videos? You've got lots of friends on Facebook and so forth and social media. Why not inject the gospel message, the Bible teachings of, of the Lord into, into your share partners? It would be a great opportunity to maybe start a conversation, but we would really like you to be encouraged and consider passing these teachings on. We want people to be benefited, so let's allow the Lord to do what he would like to do. But in the meantime, we're so glad that you've been join, joining us and enjoying these teachings. They will continue to come as the Lord tarries. But again, enjoy, enjoy the Lord. Thank you so much and continue to pray for Calvary Chapel here in the city of Harupa Valley. God bless you, Pastor Greg, once again, and we'll catch up with you next time. Have a great week in the Lord. Bye now.